indeed, it is a pleasure for me to participate in this very important meeting of both societies. And, uh, and it's, uh, it is a pleasure for me to talk particularly on, uh, uh, on such a topic like uh, uh, facial nerve, which is important in entire neurosurgical activities, which we have uh, by all kinds of surgery. I try my best in this uh, relative short time to go to all options which we have to uh, reconstruct or preserve the facial nerve. Can you see my, can you share with me the, my presentation now? Yes? Hello? Hello? It Everything is okay, Professor Sami. You have it, Wood. Wonderful. Uh, my personal experience, of course, with facial nerve, you can imagine in around 5,000 acoustic, I had to preserve facial nerve and perhaps another 2,000 of other tumors in skull base. But in all these series, in more than 700 cases, I have to reconstruct the facial nerve uh, from beginning as I did the uh, neurosurgery. And important is we find out always the cause, the pathology, as you see here uh, written um, for, uh, for the, the lesion of the facial nerve and the location, because the first goal must be approach the area of the lesion and reconstruct that. What are the important information we need for the surgical indication? Very important is, is the complete, complete paresis for how long it is existing and a spontaneous uh, muscle activity because it is, there is a fibrosis of the face muscle then you have, cannot achieve any good result. Also, the side pathology of the lesion, very, very important. And the, when we start with the nucleus of facial nerve, which is located in, the, in pons, I have published a series of 60 cases of intracranial cavernomas from which we had 27 cavernoma in the Pontine region. That was only 10 years experience from 86 to 96. And you can see here, we had 13 patients with a facial palsy after bleeding and two bilateral. And you can see in these cases, because there is no possibility to reconstruct the facial nerve. And I did the hypoglossofacial anastomosis. And this is an example of the bleeding intrapontine and the patient had this very often happened facial palsy and oculomotor paresis on, the, on this side. We have removed the uh, hematoma and cavernoma and you see the nucleus is completely destroyed. And in these cases are used normally in the past hypoglossum facial anastomosis. But I have, you can see here, the same time you can shorten the lateral uh, muscle, orbital muscle to correct the abducens paresis. And that is the wonderful result of that. But in these cases of a direct uh, anastomosis, you have an atrophy of half a part of the tongue. And therefore in the last 20 years, I am using so-called side to end anastomosis. This is the, uh, with the hypoglossus. The hypoglossus is transected about half a part of the hypoglossus. And here you can see the facial nerve, which you bring from the, uh, the intramastoidal part of the fallopian canal and bring an anastomosis to the side here to the facial nerve. The results are very fascinating. The next area is the CP angle. Of course, in CP angle, we as neurosurgeon knows that acoustic norinoma and also other uh, uh, tumors involve the facial nerve. And we have to try to uh, preserve the facial nerve and remove completely the tumor. And this is the way what we have to do. Even in large tumors, it is possible to preserve the facial nerve as you can see here in, in this case. And of course, there are uh, in the other case, you can see as well. And if the, two, if the nerve is elongated and the tumor is very large, you can preserve facial nerve, but you can have some weakness immediately after the surgery. And this weakness 
These appear within a few, few weeks when you have preserved the continuity. In facial, in, in the acoustic neuronoma, it is important the enucleation and arachnoid membrane. There are two factors which give the security to preserve the facial nerve. And you see, even in internal auditory canal, we open. First, we do enucleation. We take out the pressure to facial nerve in internal auditory canal. And then, of course, we are much more able to decompress the facial nerve and then expose the facial nerve very well. And of course, at the same time, our game is here. That is the facial nerve preserved. In the, the next thing is arachnoid member. We never touch the facial nerve during removal of the tumor. We enucleate, continue, and always the arachnoid member. This is the key point for preserving almost in every case the facial nerve. As long as you start to touch the uh, facial nerve and uh, then displace the facial nerve just by um, forceps, you start. And you see how beautiful you can see in this case, the arachnoid membrane. I am uh, then uh, slowly but surely detaching from, from the tumor. And as a, because of the time, I cannot show you all these, uh, I wanted all that. And then we stimulate at brainstem and normally we close the uh, internal artery canal with, uh, uh, with the fat tissue, which never change into the fibrosis. Muscle and every other tissues, according to our experiences, they create fibrosis. They can secondary destroy also the facial nerve. And this patient, of course, immediately after surgery has a normal facial nerve, as you see, which is two hours after the surgery. While large tumor is the same thing that we start to do the enucleation in CP angle, I go and but see that how important is irrigation and how important is also dissection of arachnoid membrane. And we can continue that. This is the facial nerve as you see here. And, and then when we have removed the tumor here, that is the end. And of course, we transect this part then with a seizure and then the tumor, the nerve is, in spite of a large tumor, the nerve is preserved. But we will see then afterwards that this patient has after surgery slight weakness on the right side. But it takes four or five weeks and we will see how beautifully this uh, uh, function recover. And this is that you have to talk to the people that don't worry. The, the thing. In the beginning of our experiences that my first 2000 cases, in 1990, I have published, this is already 30 years ago, I have published um, the result that we had at 95%, we had the preservation of facial nerve with 3%. We did the reconstruction in sit angle and 2% hypoglossofacial anastomosis. There are the different types. At the recent publication, I can tell you, according to my experience, tumor less than three centimeters. As neurosurgeon today in 2021, we have to be able to preserve the facial nerve with that technology, what I have described. Of course, in giant tumor, you know, 92% because it is really very difficult, but nevertheless, we have the right to preserve also in these cases. We can, of course, when we preserve the facial nerve, we should not forget the cochlear nerves, as you see here. All these cases I show you, we have preserved as well the cochlear nerve. My bilateral is the facial nerve is very, very important. And here you can see this patient after surgery, yes. after we have no, removed on both sides, you see the function no, of the facial no, nerve yes. on yeah. both yeah. sides. It is very, yeah. very oh, important. Yeah. And if the nerve is infiltrated, that happened, of course, in one, two percent of the patient, you cannot in every patient say uh, that the nerve is infiltrated. That's not true. It can happen only one or two percent of the cases. When we have rejected, and then we can re reconstruct with the sural nerve. And this is one example. You see the re uh, reconstruction of facial nerve in CP angle. That is uh, facial nerve palsy after the surgery here, after nine months and after 15 months, a wonderful result. If you don't have the distal stump in, in the, at the fundus, then I have introduced 1975. This is 45 years ago. I have introduced this technique, intra, uh, intracranial, intratemporal 
anastomosis. That is the first case, as you see here, central stem. Uh, uh, that is the, the transplant anterior to the sick point sinus. We make a hole and bring the second end into the transmastoidal approach of this of the lower part of facial nerve anastomosis. This is the patient who came one and a half year later to me. This is a historical case because that is the first case ever in medicine has been done this technique with this result. Of course, I show you here in a video, another patient coming from other uh, department was operated with complete facial palsy. I discussed with this patient, if I can go to the CP angle and see, I can find, because we cannot know what happened with the central stamp. But fortunately in this case, I could find the central stem here, as you see here, and then I go very good. And then here is the mastoidectomy, what I have done beside of the retro sigmoid approach. And now you can see here the facial nerve in fallopian canal, and we make a hole anterior to sigmoid sinus to the CP angle, and we take down the graft and bring the graft to CP angle here and bring the, the, the that is the neuroma is re removed and come the, 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 the cerebral graft and cerebral graft is anastomos. I have done in, in the past suture, but I don't take any uh, suture more. I use the fibrin glue for the, for the anastomos. The same, I will do that in the, in the mastoidal course. I transect the nerve here under the geniculus ganglion here, and then I bring them the second end and here I use also things. This is, that is what I wanted to show you that we see the technique. This is a very interesting case of 44 years patient in Europe who was uh, operated with a biopsy of this acoustic because it was cystic cystoarachnoidal shunt they have done in this case. And then again, also, then they did also a stotactic cyst puncture and finally they did gamma knife. And the patient was really in terrible, unbelievable condition with uh, disbalance and so came to us and I had this tumor in front of me and then I decided to do the surgery and you can see my first action was how I can remove this shunt first, but I didn't know where is that located close to the facial nerve and so that it was really a very, very difficult uh, situation here. Now you can see I can never understand what was the idea to do a shunt between the cyst of acoustic norinoma to the, to the cisterna macula. Anyway, you see here that um, um, here that we have removed first the shunt and then, then I did, yeah, the shunt is removed. And then of course, I cannot show you all the, all the, all the video. And I had to open the internal auditory canal and finally, I have removed the tumor completely and I could also preserve the facial nerve in this case very well. And, and then here, that is the brain stem and then, and then uh, the tumor was completely removed and uh, you can uh, here see the, uh, the post-operative uh, MRI with the complete removal and displacement of the brain stem is recovered. That is the patient, at, at, almost nine months after surgery, the facial nerve started to, uh, to become better. And it is a, a very nice uh, talk of him. And finally, this is one and a half year later with, me, with a normal condition and all the problem was gone. This is a very interesting case because this patient come from Santiago de Chile with this face, with complete facial palsy, had uh, hemiparesis and had two surgeries and after two surgery, a radio surgery, and then one year long-term steroid therapy. And therefore you can see the Cushing syndrome of this patient. The, the tumor was like this, compressing brain stem, and I have removed, and you see the tumor removed completely. And two weeks later, then I did the hypoglossofacial anastomosis. Here, that is the Hypo, that is hypo, the hypoglossus nerve, and that is the facial nerve. And then I did the mastoidectomy and brought the, here you can see, brought the facial nerve down to the hypoglossus nerve. And that is the technique which we are today using for all such patients. And then you see 50% of 
That is the hypoglossus nerve. 50% is uh, transected. And then the facial nerve is done. In this case, we have to suture because the, com the, the position is not good enough to use only the fibrin glue. So, but I use the one suture and the rest I use fibrin glue in this case. Now, here, one and a half year later, the patient came from Chile to me in my office. I couldn't recognize this patient. The Cushing syndrome was gone and the facial nerve was perfect. But in order to see that it is the same one, look to the eyes. That is the same eyes in the face. Also, they are not another patient. That was the tumor. And the tumor was completely no recurrence. And, and, and here you can see the, the beauty. No, you can slowly. Beauty, what you see is that the, that the tongue here yeah. had no atrophy, despite no of atrophy. its fantastic facial okay. function, and you now, have no atrophy. Because okay. of time, I have to go further. Trauma of petrous bone. Of course, we have the, all these uh, fractures of the petrous bone can create. This is a, a young uh, child and was with a facial nerve and fracture. In this case, I use the same technique, intracranial, extracranial anastomosis. You can see the same technique I have already shown to you with reconstruction. Another example of a case from ENTs three times operated, I did also here the reconstruction with my technique and you witness the results. After, after parietal uh, par, um, glandular parotis tumor, when they are malignant and normally the nerve is resected together with the tumor. So the patient has a complete facial palsy, but you have an enormous scar tissue so that the central stem is very difficult to find. In these cases, I make a mastoidectomy and I have a very clean facial nerve in the fallopian canal, and then I can use then graft and reconstruct that very well. This is before surgery, and this is after surgery when you are recovered. In the trauma, of course, subtemporal approach, transmastoidal approach, we decompress the nerve. Sometimes it's only compressed, and sometimes we have to do a reconstruction in fallopian canal. And here, one case, which I here you see the fracture, and then here is a graft in fallopian canal, and you can see also here wonderful the results after such a. Uh, uh, the same thing is true with a, with a lesion in the face in the parotid gland, and we have reconstructed. You can see the results. Very important is the facial nerve schwannomas. These patients, they have slowly facial nerve paralysis, as you see in this case. They can be in brainstem, at brainstem, at the CP angle, up to the face. And I show you some examples. We have to do the surgery as soon as possible. You see that I, 2001, also 20 years ago, I published 16 cases of this facial schwannoma. Now we have over 40 cases, and this is the classical uh, CT scan MRI of such uh, cases. Unfortunately, there is not time to show you all these cases, but I show you one of large facial nerve uh, in CP angle extended into the, into the petrous bone. You see the, how much destruction of the bone in the internal auditory canal, and you see the facial palsy before surgery. So the tumor we have removed as usual completely, and that is the graft you are seeing here. And you see that one and a half year later, how beautiful their face was re uh, uh, was uh, restored and and had a wonderful function. Another example, I go very quickly. Look, huge tumor we have removed also in this case all the tumor and then reconstructed. That was an interesting case. Unfortunately, I have a fantastic video from that how I have done reconstruction from facial nerve from here to the mastoid. The, the, the video is too long, therefore I cannot show you. This is another example, tumor in the fallopian canal. And you see the tumor is removed and reconstructed. Here you can the facial, uh, the sural nerve going in front of the stylomastoid foramen and here under the geniculate ganglion. And that is, was an opera singer with a wonderful recovery. Here in the face, we had also a series of of, uh, of facial nerve uh, tumor. This is a huge uh, tumor you can see in this video. 
that is uh, that is a facial nerve tumor schwannoma in the face up into the fallopian canal and i have decided in this case because of the age of the patient decided to remove the tumor completely and here use the uh, hypoglossus nerve and that is the hypoglossus nerve and use the half and half a glossus nerve. I, I used also the auricularis here, Magnus nerve as a transplant and anastomos between hypoglossus to the peripheral branches. Because of time, I go further and show you then um, okay. Yeah, this is the video what, what I told you. It is the tumor which was uh, it is, of course, interesting. I will show you that. Look, it is extended into the, uh, to the, and I show you perhaps very quickly how in the middle fossa I have exposed the geniculate ganglia here and I remove that. And then I have done, I have opened the internal auditory canal as you see here from middle fossa, and then tried to expose the facial nerve. A part of tumor was here in the middle fossa. And then you can see the facial nerve, and I have transected in the healthy part, the, uh, in the healthy part, the facial nerve here. Yes, this is, this is a very delicate case, and that is, I try to take a graft and anastomos this graft here. Yeah, now I transect the facial nerve. Here you can see, this is a very interesting case. That is tumor still. And that is the healthy part looking out from the internal auditory canal. And now I bring a graft, anastomos with them, but I have to close also the whole of the dura with the fat and fibrin glue. This is also very, because if you have the fistula, then you destroy everything. And you can see that I fill the entire area, the whole, with fat tissue. Here. Now is everything closed and the graft is going down to the mastoidal part. And I will show you here. That is the second end of the facial nerve. And that is the facial nerve in the fallopian canal. And this is a wonderful technique that you can use also in some cases in this situation. But I cannot unfortunately to go to details, but we close also that. Okay, this is a <clears throat> neurofibromatosis, uh, NF1, which I operated already 45 years ago with so many tumors and I reconstructed the facial nerve with a fantastic recovery. But 17 years later, she came here, you can see, with such uh, uh, re recurrences, tumors in different area and I have operated again. I have removed all these tumors that you see, retroorbital here and trans, I have transected the alveolar nerve because the alveolar mandibular nerve was also involved and removed the all tumors. You can see here, <laughs> these are the all tumors I have removed from this case and then reconstructed for the second time the facial nerve in this. A malignant tumor, of course, with neck dissection, I have done in every case is reconstruction and after removal of the tumor, completely of a facial nerve and here accessory nerve combined. Parotid malignant tumor. The best is here immediate reconstruction of the tumor when you want to be radical. This is pro post operative. And sometimes the skin is also, as some of you know, I have the complete education for plastic reconstructive surgery. And therefore, I removed here the complete skin, tumor, and facial nerve. And finally, I have reconstructed the facial nerve and then make through the flap rotation, close also the same area with the same, in the same uh, patients with the uh, on skin. And here you see the result, 
facial nerve, wonderful, and also you can see the results of the, uh, this skin flow. This is one case I published in early S7. He was a patient and student at, my, at the University of Mainz and had facial palsy as she was five months old and she was 19 years old in the university. She came to me and had dysphoresis. I did an electromicron and I found that this girl... I am, at, I think I am at the end of my talk, yeah. And, uh, and then I reconstructed this after 19 years and you can see I have received it. Therefore, I personally, my personal conclusion is that uh, you should always try in every patient who has a facial nerve to find a way to help this patient. This must be a very important part of our activities in neurosurgery. That was the reason why I have decided to talk today on facial uh, nerve in neurosurgery. I thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Sami. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you for sharing your famous surgical techniques with us and with our, uh, for our younger colleagues through a streaming on neurosurgical, neurosurgical TV. And uh, are there any questions for Professor Sami? Uh, 